I mean, I was having a lot of stomach pain, cramps. I mean, I was going to the bathroom maybe like, close to 20 times a day. Like, I felt like a sharp feeling in my stomach, like it feels like someone's stabbing me from the inside, kind of. We all know we're going through basically the same thing. We have to take pills, we're tired a lot. Funding for research at this particular time is a serious problem. Every generation, the Crohn's disease gets worse and worse and usually starts in an earlier age. There was never a, a, never a day that would go by that was just a normal day. And we would, I think we would give anything to give Spencer a normal day. Across the country, over 1.4 million people suffer from Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Having to endure these debilitating diseases is especially difficult for children and their parents. I was diagnosed in December of 2000, and um, about six months later, Brianna, my middle sister, was diagnosed. And then a couple months later, Sienna, my youngest sister, was diagnosed. Sienna has been getting really sick the past couple months. and. Um, it's really hard because she's ten, nine years old and it's really hard for her emotionally and physically to go through this. Well, we all know what we're going through. We all know we're going through basically the same thing. We have to take pills. We're tired a lot because of Crohn's. We can't eat the same food. We feel left out sometimes. Like when we first got Crohn's, we were on a liquid diet for two years. All we could drink was margarine and all we could eat was rice. But it's really hard. Ulcerative colitis and Crohn's disease are chronic illnesses, so by definition it's, it's quite cyclical, it's intermittent, um, the symptoms remit and relapse, and so there's such a lack of predictability. I found out about Crohn's, I think when I was six or seven years old, and I was like, what is this? Hold on, what happened? I, th this just came up suddenly, what happened? That leads to understandable anxiety and, and possible isolation because of the fear of needing to discuss some of this. I used to not really talk about it, but in the past couple of years I have started to. On top of that, they're dealing with a chronic illness that by nature is one of the most antisocial. The symptoms are socially embarrassing. It's not cool to talk about what's going on in the bathroom. So they're dealing with something that they're managing, often alone. This goes down my throat, which she's doing right now. The reason why I need to have the tube is for um, ketchup growth, which helps me get more calories during the day so I can get, like, I can gain more weight and grow. It is for kids just like Tyler and Sienna that research for the cure continues across the nation at universities and top medical centers such as the Mayo Clinic, the Children's Hospital of Boston, and a cure may not be far away, so vital research funding is needed. There isn't enough money at NIH to devote to children's research in IBD. Uh, there isn't even enough money at the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation. So fundraising is an absolutely essential part of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation mandate. The time is now to support inflammatory bowel disease research. We know that the foundation pays 90% of the, our dollars go to the researcher and only 10% go to the general overhead of the institution. Their scientists have established a research agenda so that the science that is studied in labs all around the country together move the scientific needle forward. We are very close to a major advancement in inflammatory bowel disease research. We have the ideas, we have the tools, but this type of research is very costly. That's why the dollars that you donate to the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation to research are so important. They bring us that much closer to the cure. My daughter thanks you.